Candace spoke in the video of open intelligence. She used the phrase open intelligence quite a bit in the video. And so to begin with, I wanted to introduce what we mean when we're talking about open intelligence. Uh, open intelligence is something that we can recognize very easily in any moment simply by stopping thinking for a moment. And when we stop thinking, even for a brief instant, what is it that is still present? What is it that we can recognize that remains whether we're thinking or not thinking, but it may be more obvious initially if we stop thinking. There's this bright alertness, this simple, wide open power to know whatever it is that's appearing in our experience. All of the sounds that we hear, all of the images that we see, <clears throat> all of the sensations that, that we're feeling right now, the, the feeling of the chair that we're sitting in, the sound of the air conditioning or whatever it is. That pure power to know, that simple, raw, awareness that is always present. It can't not be present because without it we wouldn't be able to experience anything. We wouldn't be able to experience our own thoughts. We wouldn't experience any of the phenomena that we see and hear in every moment of our life. So this is what we are referring to when we say open intelligence. We could use another term. We could say mind or awareness. <clears throat> but we use the term open intelligence simply because one of the things that we can recognize immediately about this raw power to know is that it's completely wide open regardless of how we're feeling, what thoughts we're having, what emotions we're having, whether we feel good or bad or whatever it is, that raw power to know is completely wide open and unchanging. Everything that appears in our mind or in any other aspect of our experience, however we describe it, as a bodily experience or anything else, everything, if we just relax our mind completely for a short moment, like we just did, and we look directly at our own experience, we see that everything is instantaneously self-releasing. In fact, even if we try to hold on to it, we can't. There's, there's no way. So even something that we want to disappear, something that we're trying to get rid of, if we look at it directly, that feeling or thought or whatever it is, in every instant, there's an instantaneous experience of that, and then it's gone. And then there's the next instant of the here and now, we could say. And this is, in reality, the way that our entire life proceeds. 
every moment of our life can be reduced to this simplicity. There's this raw, pure awareness, this raw, open intelligence, and then there's some continuous stream of experience. And another term that we use in the, in the balance view training is data. And that term we use to refer to all phenomena, everything that we can experience, whether it's thoughts, emotions, sensations, images, sounds, anything that we can experience. So in each moment, we have this pure power to know, and then we have a stream of data. And most of us, from early on, we've trained ourselves to describe that flow of experience and to decide what we like and what we don't like. And the normal, conventional approach to life is to try to get as many of the things that we like and try to avoid as many of the things that we don't like. And, and this, we go through this mechanically, unconsciously, throughout our life, simply because that's the way that we've been trained. We think that in order to have well-being, we have to have positive data. We have to accumulate data that we like. And we have to, at all costs, protect ourselves from data that we don't like. And this is the conventional approach to life, to happiness. But in, in this training, we're introduced to an, an alternative approach to the indulgence, avoidance, and replacement of data, of our experience. All conventional approaches can fit into one of those three categories. We either indulge what we're experiencing, meaning we, we really get into it, believe in it, emphasize it, emphasize the description of it, or we try to avoid it in some way, try to escape the experience, or we, we try to replace it with something better. Like if we're having a, a hateful thought, we, try to, we might try to replace it with a, a loving thought. But this is just more of the mechanical attempt to try to control the flow of our experience in the hope that, that this will deliver lasting well-being. But we can see from our own experience that this is impossible. This will never deliver lasting well-being because we can't predict what the flow of our data will be. We can't avoid experiences that we don't like, and we can't hold on to the experiences that we do like. It's very easy for us to just look at our own life and see this. So in this training, what we introduce is a fourth alternative to the avoidance, indulgence, and replacement, which is to let everything be as it is. For short moments, repeated many times. And simply returning to that simple recognition that we just made in the beginning, where we recognize that raw, awareness, our, our own simple power to know, just returning to that simple recognition and letting the flow of data do whatever it does, 
without trying to control it or describe it or do anything else with it, we, we recognize more and more and more an innate happiness, contentment, ease, complete ease that, that doesn't depend on the flow of data. It doesn't depend on what we're thinking, what we're feeling, our sensations. It doesn't depend on any of that. And it's always been there, these qualities of innate peace, innate ease, innate happiness, innate harmony with everyone. These are simply intrinsic qualities of our fundamental identity, our true identity which is open intelligence. We're used to thinking of ourselves as this, this, this physical form. But again, if we look directly at our experience, what is it about us that never changes? The only thing about us that has never changed throughout our entire life is what's looking through our eyes, what is hearing, what is sensing. When we look in the mirror, that which is looking in the mirror today is exactly the same as what was looking in the mirror when we were five or two. And it, it'll, it'll be exactly the same if we live to be 90 or 100. That raw power to know, that is our true identity, our unchanging identity. Everything else about us, <clears throat> all of the things that we have trained ourselves to identify with, our physical body, our ideas, our belief systems, our, our memories of our past, everything that we use to construct an identity in a conventional sense, all of that is it's constantly changing. Our body is changing in every moment. Our cells are constantly dying off and being replaced by new ones. And our bodies, if we're lucky, only last for 80, 90, 100 years if we're very lucky, which isn't very long. So it's no wonder that the, the conventional approach to life is inherently anxiety producing because we're trying to do the impossible. We're trying to find stability and a sense of lasting security and contentment in something that is inherently unstable and constantly changing, unpredictable, and that is headed towards <laughs> a certain end, no matter how fortunate we are. So it's, so it's so good to really get real about this and just see, first of all, to be introduced to the fact that that there is another way of viewing ourselves and that and this view is not a made up view it's something that we can verify for ourselves we can see the validity of it in our own experience it's not an idea that we have to accept it's something that we need to learn and 
decide whether we agree with it, whether it makes sense. This is something that is designed to be tested out in our own experience. That's really the strength of this training is that it is guaranteed to work because it's rooted in reality, the reality of who we are. And all of the support that's available in Balanced View, all of the tools that are provided are simply, are all for the same purpose. They're all simply to support the direct recognition of this for each of us and, and to support that recognition inexhaustibly because the, the benefits of, of getting familiar with our fundamental identity don't just stop at a certain point. They, they continue steadily to expand. And, th and this has been my direct experience. This is why I stuck around because it, first of all, I liked the fact that I wasn't being told what to believe. I was given a set of tools essentially, and then said, test this out for yourself. See if this is true for you. And then just keep showing up and, and see what happens. And just by continuing to show up, the, the real magic of, of who we really are becomes more and more evident. And it really, it, it's, it, it starts to pervade every aspect of our life and enhance every aspect of our life. So I, I'm very grateful to be able to share this and to be able to also share this experience with uh, people from all over the world now who are involved uh, in the Four Mainstays training. And uh, we hit the support structure in Balanced View is called the Four Mainstays. And those refer to this, the practice of short moments, of which I was just speaking, uh, the worldwide community, the training itself, the training media and the calls that we offer and the trainings that we offer, and the trainer, which is an individual trainer with whom you have the opportunity to have a lifelong relationship, if you would like that a lifelong relationship of, with someone whose only aim is to support us in this instinctive realization and to support the, the flowering of our own capacities through that realization. And uh, so it's, it's, it's really an amazing, it's an amazing blessing.